What's up guys and welcome back to the Camper Van Builder YouTube channel. So today's video is just going to be an updated video regarding the latest DVLA changes for the Camper Van conversion requirements if you're going down the route of having a box van, camper van, uh, sorry box van or panel van registered as a motorhome slash camper van with the DVLA. Now recently the DVLA have been rejecting pretty much all uh, re-registrations. They've been in the process of updating the requirements for future conversions to be re-registered as a motorhome and a camper van. And just this week, in what's this, towards the end of October 2019, the DVLA finally published out the latest guidelines in regards to converting vans into camper vans and having them re-registered with the DVLA. Now having them re-registered is always advantageous because it will provide a better insurance uh, quote in case there was ever any mishaps, if the van got in an accident, stolen, damaged, anything like that. Generally a registered camper van will retain and uh, hold more value than a standard converted panel van. It's just a name on the document, all of a sudden it just seems to increase the value of it. So that's one of the main reasons uh, for insurance purposes more than anything else. It is also a requirement, the DVLA say that if you are converting a van, you do need to let them know. But as I say recently, when everybody's been letting them know, they've just been knocking all the uh, applications back, rejecting them and just converting them as a van with windows. So the latest uh, guidelines are out. So here they are. Now internally, nothing's changed at all. They still want to see some seating area. A table, the table needs to be permanently fixed, it can be removable, but once it's made up as a table it needs to be in a permanently fixed position so it can't wobble about, shake about, this, that, the other. You need to have some cooking facilities, whether that's a two burner gas hob or a microwave, this, that, the other, they're all fine as long as that's all pictured showing available cooking facilities as well. You need some water storage, now it doesn't specify that you need running water or that you need a tap, it just says you need water storage. So generally photos of just a water storage tub in a cupboard is generally sufficient or it was previously and again the new recommendations don't stipulate that you need running water it just says water storage. Obviously you need a bed now the bed can be made out of uh, the seating area so if you've got like a rock and roll bed that classes as your seating when it's in the seating position fold it down into the bed and that classes as the bed as well. As long as the bed is 180 centimeters long or longer that's fine but that is the minimum required length that again they're supposed to see photographic evidence of. Now previously you did only need one side window that could go in the sliding door or the rear panel this that the other. They have updated this now and the DVLA now require two sliding windows on the same side of the van. So if you have a window in the sliding door you would also need to put a window in the panel behind the sliding door. So if you've got a window on either side, officially, from the looks of it, that doesn't count. They want to see two windows down the same side, so officially it lets in a lot more daylight into the living area, accommodation area. Now we, they do also say, and this was in the previous guidance as well, that you do need an access door, and the access door does not include the driver's or the passenger door. Now in builds like this, where I'm in a minibus, and I've got one main entrance door, I'm presuming that that's still going to be acceptable because that provides access to the full living area as well as the driving area and that's the only main door. In regards to your smaller vans, say your short wheel base like Ford Connects or your NVs or this that the other, if you don't have a sliding door on the side it might be more awkward to get it classified. Whether they'll register, re-register with the rear doors it's doubtful, they didn't like doing that before, they always preferred to see a sliding door as access into the main accommodation. So if you're looking to purchase a van, try and get one with a sliding door, that will solve all those headaches. Now previously on the external guidelines, that was pretty much it, they just wanted to see a, sliding, uh, a side access door and a side window. This is where things have changed now. They want in two windows on the side door, sorry, on the same side as the van. They also want to see an awning rail running the length of a van. It doesn't say that you need to show an awning in place, but you do need to photo an awning rail, so there's the potential to attach one. 
Now it also says that you do need some camper van graphics down both sides of the van. It doesn't say what type of camper van graphics, but again, it's just something to differentiate it away from your standard builders vans, panel vans, this, that, the other. Whether it's swirly lines or some gra like text graphics going down the side, as long as it's relatively motorhome-ish, that should be fine. They didn't want this before, but again, this is a new part of the new stipulations. Now, possibly the most controversial issue of the new regulations is that they are saying that all conversions should have a high top on, not a pop top. They've specifically stated that pop tops will not count. Now again, this is because when the vans are sat in traffic, they're wanting police, fire, uh, service, ambulance, this, that, the other, to be able to just look at a van and say, that's a camper van, rather than saying, is it or isn't it type thing. Obviously, some camper van graphics will help down the side, and a high top, again, should help differentiate, but what they're saying is basically, if you've got a pop top, and you're sat in traffic with the roof down, it looks no different to any other panel van, so that's why they are now saying that you do need a high top on the top. Now, what that's going to do with all of the conversion companies that are fitting all the pop tops to the T4s, the T5s, this, that, the other, who knows? These regulations might get amended in the future as well, but this is what's being released now, and these are the main stipulations that they're requiring now. Now, there is a full checklist on the DVLA website. I'll put a link to the checklist, and if you're going to be re-registering the van, just print this checklist off, tick everything that they have already listed on the checklist. It's basically a pre-filled in form. You just need to tick in everything that's been done to the van, sign it, provide photos, send it off, and in theory, they should start re-registering vans as camper vans again. So as I say, the vast majority of the internal requirements, exactly the same as they were before. It's just a few more additional requirements on the outside, with the high top slash pop top being potentially the main sticking issue for future conversions. So I can see the prices of second-hand high tops going through the roof on the second-hand market because of these new regulations. But this is what they're saying that we need to adhere to now. So these are the new regulations. I just thought I'd do this quick update video because I've already got a previous video on my channel showing what the DVLA regulations required. Obviously that's a little bit out of date now with these new external features that they're requiring to see. So I thought I'd just do a quick update video just going over the new requirements just for anybody who might be a little bit unsure as to what everything means. So if you're unsure about anything that I've talked about just leave me a comment in uh, below the video. I'll reply to anything that I do receive. Have a look in the description, there'll be a link to the DVLA covering letter, the DVLA checklist that they do want to see. I'll also have links over to my main website, thecampervanbuilder.com, my Patreon page, Facebook, this, that, the other. So have a look for the links in the description for the DVLA links and links to my other accounts and website as well. And remember to pop back and follow along with my current and future campervan conversions. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful. Cheers.